Well, let's start with a story. One time we had a client, this is actually fairly recent, who wanted a really simple website. <laughs> You've heard that before. And it, uh, to be honest, it was. It was pretty simple. It was a template with you know, pre-built page builder template sort of thing. They knew exactly what they wanted, just needed something up fast. Uh, but it didn't go down like that. It took about two months of constant emailing, being like, come on, man, give me some content, please. And then two months goes by, um, and they give us some content. It doesn't, like, it's not quite, it doesn't fit the template. It's just not right. So like, oh, God, come on, give me some more. Like, this is how you need to do it. Lay it out like this. Um, a month later, we get this email saying, oh, we got this new marketing dude. He's going to be taking over the website. Uh, all right. So marketing dude goes, all right, here's all the content. It's completely different than what was written before. And we go, look, we just need to get something done at this point. It doesn't quite match the template. Let's just do it. We'll just shoehorn it in, work it out. And we do it all. We send it back. And he's like, that's not the template we picked. I was like, yeah, it is. It says, first email. Like, here it is. There's the template you picked. No, 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 no. There's an email like 74 and a half emails later after all this content. There's this line down the bottom. We said we want this new template. Oh, God. All right, look, I just want this job out at this point. We'll just do it. Put the content in that new template. Send it back. The marketing dude sends it to the CEO. CEO goes, where's my content? And we go, what? The marketing dude gave us the new content. No, 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 no. That wasn't supposed to happen. So yeah, that job turned into a shit show very quickly. It was a, some, sort of taken about an hour, but it ended up six months later, two template changes, two complete content changes. And while that's a pretty extreme example, I think most web designers can uh, identify with this in some way or another, whether it's like these 900 long email trails, uh, getting a logo in a Word document, or uh, it just, just const changing goalposts, all kinds of just silly stuff that clients will do. And uh, like uh, was said in an earlier talk, this is something we have to take responsibility for because if all our clients are failing to send us the right content on time, there's a pretty common thing now, that's us. We need to improve our processes. So here's my talk, streamlining the process of getting content, um, preferably without breaking legs. Um, yeah. So this talk is for designers and developers agency owners and anyone who's freaking sick of waiting for content. <laughs> and if that's not you, you're abnormal and weird and too good at this shit and you can go. <laughs> uh, we're going to cover three why reasons why clients stall, how to fix that, and my favorite tools to do exactly that. Um, just so you know, if you Google like how to do a talk, it, it says stuff like establish credibility at the start. <laughs> so I figured because most of you don't know me from a bar of soap, so, and I need to sort of convince myself that I'm worthy of speaking here. So, uh, Been in online business since 2010. We wrote some software for uh, SEO, which I'd probably try to not talk about much because it's, it's become a black hat area. Um, but that's where we started, in building websites and all that sort of stuff. Got into web design somewhere in the middle, building websites for clients. Built a software product and sold it last year. Um, mobile, web app, dev, we've been in this space for a long time. And now, now we're in the process of building Content Snare, that's our software product for getting content from clients. Funny that. So I think first it's important to understand why clients stall with this stuff. Like, yeah, it's just important. So um, the three major reasons, first, they just forget. So we're all really, really busy people, right? So you get a if you're a client, you get a task from your web designer, especially you've gone through all this like work to choose who you're going to go with, because and they they tend to once they've made that decision to go with you, they're like they feel like they've done this big thing, their job's done, and then you get this request like, oh, we need some content, and they're like, oh crap, and goes in a too hard basket, and they just forget about it. So that's the first problem. Second one is they can't visualize like you can, or we all can, right? Like when we're talking about having a hero header with a background and a headline, subhead, see call to action, all that sort of stuff, we've got this picture in our head of what it's going to look like. They don't have that because they don't do this every day. 
And last, the blank screen problem. Now, if any of you guys do regular content, or if you've tried and you get up, you get your Google Doc up or whatever to start writing content, and you're like, uh, where do I start? That's what they've got with their entire website. So the overarching theme is to make it easy for your clients because easy things get done, hard things get shafted to the back of the pile and they will continue to. So problem number one, they forget. So we're gonna remind them, that's our solution, duh. Um, but you know, that's, there's a few different ways you can do that. Um, one of the easiest is just to remind yourself to remind your clients. Mm, I don't know why that's relevant. That's a screenshot of our software, just some very basic follow-up rules. But um, I'm going to go into the calendar. So my favorite method of doing this uh, when we were still doing it manually was time blocking. So this is a classic productivity technique to put everything into one box. You know, So if you're doing client work, you might just have a four-hour block in the morning that you just do client work with. Friday afternoons, you hassle some pesky clients for content. So just one block a week, maybe an hour, maybe two, however many clients you've got, just go through, see what's outstanding, and chase them all up manually. It's the most basic method of all, but it can work. Second, project management systems. This is, this is a contentious one. Um, like a lot of people have opinions on whether or not you should get your clients into your project management systems. Um, clients generally don't like having another sort of thing to log into, another place to get, like they just don't like learning new things. Um, so, but even if you're not using your client, getting your clients in there, because you can, like this is teamwork, you can set reminders for your clients. So um, if they were in there, you just have it automatically follow up with them or whatever, um, due dates, all that sort of lovely project management stuff. But you can also, again, just get it to remind yourself, whether it's tasks or reminders in the project management system to just remind you to follow up with your client. Now, I love this tool because basically, even if I screw up the rest of the talk and this is all you take away from it, it's like totally worth it. One of the best tools I've ever used. Um, that, that's what it does, the simplest way to schedule an email reminder. So it is so, like, I use this for everything, not just like reminding content, it's, I do it for making sure people get proposals signed or if it's just like an email to someone that I want them to get back to me about, I just put in a CC address. So what you do, you blind, blind carbon copy, something like five days at two June for second of June, seven weeks, whatever, like it's really good at like natural, the language processing and it'll bounce that email back to you in that amount of time. So if you wanna chase up with clients every week, you um, you send them an email, blind copy, and it'll bounce back to you seven days later, or whatever you set. If you use the CC field, it'll bounce back to you and your client. I just find the built-in reminders are kind of shit, so I'd rather personalize it um, each time. But yeah, use this for everything, it's cool. And you know, if, you've got, if you upgrade to like the $5 a month version, you get response detection as well, so it'll cancel the follow-up if they respond. And this is kind of a cool one, um, CRM email automation tools. So this is ActiveCampaign, this is my favorite go-to uh, marketing automation software. Um, starts pretty damn cheap. Like you can get this full automation thing for like nine bucks a month, under 500 contacts. Um, but you can just have a simple series of like send an email, wait five days, and you can either trigger it based on dates or um, you know, if you're using the CRM, you could, ha you could have like a drag and drop box you move uh, their job into the in progress section and it just fires this off maybe. Um, that's like a whole talk in itself automation but just kind of want to let you know that this is an option. Um, but yeah, so you could wait for five days, wait for it to be a weekday so you don't hit them on a um, weekend. Uh, and you can do cyclic stuff in this too. So you could sit there and just continually bounce around, send them an email however long. Um, all right, yeah, cool. So problem two, they can't visualize. This one's really simple, um, and that's wireframes and mockups like this one. So it, again, like this is just an assumption that a lot of us make where if we're telling a, a client what might be on their website, we're building this picture in our heads that they don't have. So by doing this kind of thing, it can really help. And a lot of pushback on this is usually something like, you know, you don't want to create wireframes and mockups for every client if you're not, but you can have generic things. You know, you don't have, a hero head is pretty common, right? It comes into a lot of websites. You can have a general one, 
it might they just have this like nice blue color or whatever like it's not if they're gonna you got to make it obvious to them that it's not their final colors or whatever but just to help them visualize what this is going to look like what i didn't say at the start the, the whole point of all of this um, by the way is so we have access to a lot of people that are failing to get content from clients and that are doing well with getting content from clients because that's what our software does and uh, we talk to everyone who's like successful at getting content, like the ones that have basically eliminated the problem and the ones that haven't. And that's what these three things are. So um, just to provide you a little context with this, like I'm not just making this crap up, it's what we look at their accounts and we see what they're doing and this is what they're doing. Um, so yeah, this is like taking the next step. This is inside Content Snare, but it's just a wireframe with some arrows, you know, like really simple stuff, but in the client, can now see when you're talking about the headline in the header, it's there. It's really, really obvious um, it's, it's to us. It's not obvious to a lot of clients, especially the non-tech savvy. Um, and yeah, the final problem being the blank screen problem. How long have I got left? And you probably won't get there, but we'll see. Um, structure and guidance. So this is kind of ties into that last one a little bit, like where I said with the hero header, you've got headline, subheadline, you know, button, text, or whatever. Um, actually breaking those apart into little areas where they put their content. So you can, you, you know, you could say, oh, I need a subheadline headline in an email, and that might come back to you in some more kind of wacky Google document with like strange formatting and crap all over the place. But if you actually break it up and say, this is where you put your headline, this is where you put your subheadline, we're making it easy so they can't screw it up. They probably still will try. So, so there's a difference here, like asking for a heading and a blurb on your services. This is the, we're going to go a bit further now with guidance and actually give them instructions on how to write a headline. And again, you don't have to do this for every client. You know, like writing a headline is pretty similar guidance for every client. You just send every client gets the same thing about how to write a headline. Um, okay, so tools for these last two things, I pretty much just put them together because you can't really separate the structure and the guidance. It's got to be together. Web forms, everyone in here is going to be familiar with Gravity Ninja type form, Google Forms. The, here's a free version of type form. Google Forms is free, kind of looks like crap. Gravity and Ninja, um, yeah, they work. The cons, I mean, they, they're good. In a lot of ways, like you can have your instructions there and your guidance and, and your fields and you can lock things down to numbers and email addresses and all the lovely stuff you know forms can do. Uh, where they kind of fall down is in lot, where there's lots of content and they need to come back several times and fill it in because there's no way a client's going to sit down and get all this done in one go. That's just not going to happen unless they're like freaky super people. But that, I mean, Gravity Forms has a save and continue later. But I've just found they're not very good at using that. <laughs> um, docs, MS Word, whatever the Mac version is. I don't do Mac. Google Docs. <laughs> um, uh, I love Google Docs because it's like collaborative uh, and um, live, right? So that there's no bullshit like saving documents and getting the wrong version from seven emails ago. It's just one. One place where they can go and type. The little trick uh, there is just putting a table, a one by one table in. Kind of looks like a field in a form. It's quite handy. Um, you say put your bloody content in the boxes, not everywhere else. Because otherwise you'll end up with something like that. That's not real, obviously, but I've had way worse content documents than that come back with like instructions with red italics and yellow highlighting and crap all through it, and you've got to try and decipher that and use it on a website. This just wastes another several hours every project. But yeah, it's, um, it's simple. You know, you can stick your um, instructions and stuff in there, um, just like you would um, with the forms, like I was showing before. And obviously, finally, we've got Content Snare, uh, or dedicated tools for this kind of stuff. There's a whole bunch of them. These are like kind of competitors to us, I guess. They're all in like slightly different fields. Slick Plan does like site mapping as well as the content gathering. It's kind of like, yeah, depends what you want to do more. I guess like it's more dedicated at the site mapping. Kentico, they call it like a pre-CMS, so it's like a, oh, it's an open source thing. Lots of weird stuff you can do with it. And gather yeah, content is kind of like enterprise level, like 100 plus page, like multiple people working on one project, approval processes, 
like top level stuff. I'm not going to even pretend we're in that territory. Um, I probably wouldn't put many of my clients into that though. Like we, me and my business partner, who's like the techest person I know, spent like half a day trying to work it out and we couldn't. But it's awesome when there's lots of people working on something. Um, yeah, so that's just a really simple like. So some pushback on, on using dedicated tools as well is, like I said before, you don't want clients to have to get into new systems, um, like your project management system. So um, the key is making whatever you use, it's got to be super simple, right? Like read thing, put text in, you know? It's just got to be simple, no matter what you choose. That's it. I just want to finish on that quote. Don't make me think, because that's, uh, yeah, pretty much. I think that's it. Yeah. Um, there's all my stuff, if you want to add me on the things. Um, podcast, that's actually a new podcast, if you search it, whatever app you're using. Um, we just talk a lot of crap about different things that help agencies and business owners. It's good. Um, yeah, Troy Dean's coming. Actually, he's already been on, and he's coming on again soon. Uh, and that's my Facebook group, if you want to come in there. There's a whole bunch of guys have joined already. Yeah, I was just going to say, take a photo and do it all later. Slides. Thanks, Kath, for that idea. Did it, like, last minute. Um, yeah, that's it. Thanks so much, James. <laughs> okay, I have two mics for questions. Who hmm. would like to ask? I didn't get any hecklers. I had a lot of people promising to heckle last night. So this is... <laughs> I'm good now. I, just, I got a laser pointer, so I'm going to zap you with you. <laughs> Lazy. <laughs> I have a question then. If um, yeah. Talk about delivering content. How do you qualify the content that you need from someone? So if you specify that uh, I want a high-res images, uh, image 250 words on mm. X, how do you control the quality? The quality is a whole other thing. Okay. Um, <laughs> but you improve the quality by showing them how to do it okay. and not saying, give me a headline. It's their content, ultimately. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. But so especially if they're doing it. Obviously, there's a whole other type of agency that don't collect content. They just write it for them. So this is obvi obviously the assumption here is that you're not writing the content. The client doesn't have the budget or they want to write it or whatever. Um, yeah, so in that, you just want to guide them as much as possible. So those instructions all through, you know, this is why the whole header area is important. Um, it's the first thing they're going to see. They've got three second rule, blah, blah, blah. Like this is all in the documents or the, the tool. Um, just to improve that quality, right? Like we've even started trying to write other articles like guidance on like this is how you write a headline putting it all together if that little blurb we wrote isn't enough then go over here and read a whole document obviously that's a shitload of work for clients they might not want to do it but usually the blurb's enough hmm. over here great talk dude cheers so the question that I've got for you is, and I'm sure everyone deals with this as well, mm. you've got to try to give them, you've got to try to get as much information as you can for you to be able to do your job right in the first place, mm. right? Everything that you've said there is, is fantastic, but as soon as they know it's going to take them 30 minutes, 40 minutes to do, they put on the back burner. Yeah, um, and that's why I like so what do you to, do? yeah, I like to encourage God, what's the word? I knew I'd forget vocabulary after last night. Um, being able to do things in bits, you know, like progressively, right? So encouraging them to go in and do like five fields, you know, one day. And I actually want to build this into Content Snare one day. It's not there yet. Some kind of smarts where it's like, if it's two weeks away, the deadline, and they haven't done anything yet, maybe get them to do like three fields today, like whatever. Um, but yeah, it's that progressive thing. Like that's why Google Docs is good because they're like they can go in and do a little bit at a time. Same as Content Snare, um, blocking it up, breaking it up into just small pieces for them. That's pretty much all you can do, right? Make it a small task instead of a huge one. Hello. Hey. You wanted a heckler? <laughs> no, <laughs> just joking. Um, the copyright. Mm. Have you, I don't know, in your content snare system or anything, have you thought about doing something like having some form of like copyright checking or some, mm. some sort of analysis to see whether the content's actually legit new content yeah, or if it's just them popping it off something? Because that, I think, is becoming obviously a bit of an issue. But also, True. they're dumb enough to not know that 
copying other people's content, A, it's against the law, but B, it's actually not helping them for SEO in that as well. But is, yeah. can you help, would content snare be helping web designers to kind of get through that issue? Yeah, I mean, we could. We haven't done it yet. We pretty much, when we launched, I don't know, just over a year ago, we had basically an MVP, blank slate kind of thing, and just we could build the stuff that people ask. Um, that's actually the first time that's come up, but I hopefully you remember because that'll go on my Sunday list. It's actually really simple. Like we, our previous tool integrated with the tool that does exactly that. You buy a bunch of credits; they're super cheap, like, and it does exactly this. So yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, my question was, um, <clears throat> sorry, my voice is a bit raspy after last night. <laughs> um, <laughs> my worry too. <laughs> How do you build in pushing back dates when they don't? do this stuff even though you've made it so easy for them and ah, negotiating yeah. that in terms of delivery times and yeah and ev people do this lots of different ways in fact i wrote a whole blog post about it um but my what we used to do was just say your site goes into the queue when we've got the content i'm not promising shit until you give me all the content i mean not everyone can deal deal with that <laughs> um like i got to a point where I was just like, screw you guys, I'm doing what I want to do. Um, you know, if you want to be nice, I'm sure, but I don't know. If, good luck. <laughs> i got a question, James. Um, once you've got the content in there, how do you get it out? Do you have integrations and APIs that we can actually pull it straight out into something did else? Did you or put you... her up to this? No, <laughs> she did. Kath's been hitting me up this, for this for ages. So it's a good question, actually, um, because I've wanted to do this for ages, but I can't actually think of a way, can I come up with a way that's actually going to save the most time? Like unless you have pre-built modules or templates that you're dumping in there that have the same like unique identifier, like if it's like three squiggly brackets open closed with like a unique ID, then sure, we can easily, like we could just do a, have a plugin that does a database search and replace and pulls all the content out of content snare and puts it in. But if this is a unique website, it's going to take you just as long to copy, put the stupid IDs in than it will to put the content in, right? So I don't know. I'd be super keen to talk to you more to you about this because I want to make that work. I just don't know what the best way is. Oh yeah, you just dump to a file and it puts all your images in different folders and um, yeah, it's pretty much it's still just like text and HTML that it dumps out at the moment. I really want to make that better, but I just I need people like you to tell me how it would work. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, Gutenberg's kind of got me excited because now we can build templates for all the different um, items that are in there, I guess. All right, so your main usage for it is like getting content for a new site, so basically sure. around page content, right? Mm -hmm. um, I've got a client that I post all their blog posts for them because they just don't have... The, the time to train mm. people up and that it's just not their core cool thing. So yep. um, can you use it or create some different templates there so that you're capturing the blog content from yeah. them? Yeah, you could. Um, it could be overkill though, like a blog post. I mean, I guess with Gutenberg, it's all going to change. But right now, a blog is a title and some text. Well, so, so you could just SEO like that anyway, and right? and Sorry? The, sorry, SEO keywords and metadata. Yeah, true. Yeah, you could have another tab there with different keywords and stuff. Same as if you're using Google Docs, you might start, you might lead with all those boxes for SEO stuff and then just, you know, put the blog below it all. Yeah, because that's what we're doing at the moment is basically just a Google Doc that is like a little mm. meta table at the start and then just they just dump the content after. Yeah, and I mean, when we, when we accept guest posts, which is kind of similar, we just use a gravity form. Um, I guess our people that are guest posting on our site are a bit more technical, but um, we just have a gravity form that's like, here's all the stuff we need, which is SEO related stuff, like a, a quote for tweets, like all these different bits of information, and then just a link to the Google Doc where the actual post is. And so like, yeah, it seems to work well, but our people are technical, so. Cool, thanks. Good. Any other questions? Sweet. Please let us thank James again one more time. <laughs>